Hello everyone, Alex with Beam It Up here. Today we're going to continue with our series on plumbing a one bedroom apartment in Revit. We're going to deal with drainage. Uh, we started this with a double bowl sink in the kitchen and today we're going to deal with the washing machine and the bathroom group. Been down with COVID for the last couple of weeks, hasn't been fun. Uh, but hopefully today we're going to see how there's at least a couple of ways of uh, skinning a cat and I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks. See you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications, you don't miss any of our videos. So what we have done is recreated our typical floor plan for level one, level two, with a level seven as well, you know, like kind of in the middle, and then level 14 at the top. So we're gonna continue piping our one bedroom apartment for sanitary drainage. So this is where we left last time. We had done the kitchen sink, and now we wanna do level one for the bathroom group, and then level two for the bathroom group. They're gonna be different, uh, because one of them's gonna have the underground and the other one's not. So let's go back to, remember we had a, a scope box we had created. So we're gonna do something similar to what we did for the first floor on the second floor. So let's duplicate our view and let's uh, rename this uh, level one as level, I mean, this level two as level two, one bedroom apartment. And let's uh, apply a, a scope box to this. So for that, we come down here, right under view range where it says scope box. And then we select our one bedroom apartment. That's gonna crop our view nice and, and neat. Um, and now let's apply a view template so we can work a little bit more comfortably. Uh, actually, let's, let's take this out so we have full flexibility on it. I like to have this in fine, the detail level, so that I can see the pipes well. And then a wireframe for display representation. And um, let's change our view range a little bit. Let's get a little depth here so we can see under the slab. So let's take this to, let's say, minus two feet. And then for the view depth as well, let's do minus two feet. And now we're ready to start. Let's start with this uh, little section here uh, on our washer. And um, that would be our washer and dryer. It's a combo unit. Let's start on the on level two. Let's stretch this up a little bit. And in reality, what you're gonna have coming out of your washer is that one and a half inch drain hose. And that's gonna be discharging into a washer service box, which is gonna look something like that, which will include cold water, hot water, and sanitary drainage, something like this. And some of them come with uh, hammer arresters already. That's uh, pretty nice. And then downstream of that, you're gonna have your tailpiece, your P-trap, and then you have your stack, right? Your, your vent, and then you continue with your drainage. So uh, for this example, we're not gonna do that. We don't have a service box right now. So we're just gonna tie into directly from the, the washer just so we keep the reading from the plumbing fixture. But I just wanted to show you guys how, how it's really connected in, in the field. Um, for now, let's just bring this uh, up a little bit, let's say four feet, and uh, let's turn a little, because I know that right behind it, there's a lot of domestic water. So uh, I wanna be out of that mess, outside of that mess. So now we can drop. This will be the drop out of the service box. Uh, so that little piece that I just drew would represent that flexible, one and a half inch hose. Let me show it to you here in 3D view, that little piece. So right there, uh, I need to change that to a P-trap, of course. And one thing to keep in mind for this, uh, I'm talking about washing machines, is that, let me see if I find it here in the code. See, for washers, the the minimum size of the P-trap is two inches. And the minimum size of the of the standpipe is actually three inches. But you know, let's let's just split here. This would be this would represent that service box that I just showed you. And let's make all this uh, two inches, including the under slab piping. And again, we're on the second floor, and we lost our P trap, so we will have to change that a little bit later. Let's split this up so that we can change this to two inches and have a real fitting there, and then the reducer to the top uh, to the vent. So this will be our flexible drain connecting to our service box. Now let's uh, go to our lavatory. And um, again, there, there's a million ways of uh, skinning a cat. And uh, I'm gonna show you just a few of them and I wanna spark a conversation. Let's uh, take our 
stack a little bit more towards the right so it falls within the wall and um, now regarding the toilet keep in mind that the toilets have an internal trap so you will need a p-trap there now let's get our main uh, sanitary stack to four inches and sometimes you'll see a closet bent uh, which is a reducing fitting from four inches to three inches in this case we're going three inch throughout until we get to our sanitary T so that's gonna be our main stack it's gonna span all the floors and that's gonna be a four inch pipe so let's um, now we want to connect to our tub and in order to do that we're gonna take a two inch line and we're not gonna slope it and let's talk a little bit about that in a bit and for now I'm changing this um, sanitary T into a double sanitary T and then using my routing preferences I'm turning that into a double combination wide bend so this piece of the pipe is supposed to be sloping down right but then when it gets to the combination wide bend this is a double fitting and then that would make it so that this this whole fitting is in the same plane right in a horizontal plane so this arm of the fitting and this arm of the fitting are horizontal they're not sloped so you know that that uh, strictly speaking you're not you're not compliant because you're not sloping your pipe all the way down to the connection anyway let's continue now piping from our top and there's one thing I want to show you here sometimes you'll see this pipe this way and I'm piping it wrong on purpose uh, you'll see let me draw my stack here and then this will be my sanitary T and then right there that's the problem so you shouldn't be having a P trap right here and then this being the vent stack just like if it was a lavatory it's not the same situation because what happens is that on your tub you have your overflow plate here right and um, see so that's your tub overflow right here so this is what you're gonna have in real life see this is your drain right here and then that's your overflow right here and then downstream of this connection is where you will have your p-trap so that's the way we're gonna do it because that's the correct way of doing it and here we're gonna see a little bit clearer what I was talking about before so I'm gonna change that into my double combination wide band fitting so what I was saying is that out of this outlet you can slope up all the way you want it doesn't matter this piece and this piece are horizontal because this fitting is in a horizontal plane so this little piece of pipe is not sloped so you gotta be careful about doing this it's not my, my preferred way of doing things I'm just showing it to you so in this case I'm sloping up let's go all the way up to align with our washer and then a little trick that I use I just remove my horizontal piece and then I trim from horizontal to vertical and I change my elbow to a long sweep elbow because that's what's required by code and then here it seems like I'm not gonna have enough space and so even though it's only a one and a half inch line I'm gonna inherit elevation and, and slope up and then I need to change my sanitary T into my combination I didn't have enough space there so let me you know shift things around a little bit I'm trying to make some space to see if I can connect to the stack coming from the lavatory so since there's not enough space for that vent stack to connect what I'm gonna do is disconnect here and I'm gonna turn around 90 degrees to the other way I'm gonna get a starter piece in the horizontal here so I go like that I move a little bit now I align to the other horizontal piece from here to here and I'll remove my horizontal piece and the elbow and let's trim from here to here and now I simply get the well I need to change to um, long sweep bend here and now my fixture arm I can connect with an elbow once I already made the connection 
to the horizontal. There we go. And we had said that connecting our tub this way was not the correct way of doing things. And, and the reason for that is that, it, you know, you have this, that's your toilet right there. So you have some nasty stuff coming down here. And then the odors can easily come up here and enter the condition space. Do, you don't want that, right? Your P-trap should be protecting not only your main drain, but also the, the overflow from the tub. So let's turn this P-trap into an elbow. Let's heal this cap. Let's do trim extend here. Now that's the way it's supposed to be. So it seems like we're in pretty good shape. So I left this one pipe wrong on purpose. This is the first floor. I wanted to talk a little bit more about why it is wrong to just provide the P-trap on the drain and not protect the overflow of the tub. Uh, again, this is the water closet and you have nasty stuff flowing down there, right? This is your main sanitary stack, right? And uh, you have odors coming out of here, right? So even though you have your P-trap protecting so that the odors don't get into the condition space through your drain, odors can easily come up here and enter the condition space through your overflow plate. So that's why you want to have this P-trap not here, but down here protecting both of them, okay? So I'm going to show it to you on the second floor, which I already did. This is the arrangement that you want, see? because now you have, well, this is a little different because I, I use for this one the connection, uh, this is a combination wide band with side outlet. Um, but I wanted to show you, you know, this a uh, couple of different ways of piping this. In this case, I came from the um, washer, right? And then the, wa the washer line picked up the, the sink, right? And then that connected, that looped around the toilet and connected from the other side together with the with the tub obviously I we would have to fix this the same way with it with this one right so but th this would be a, another way of doing it and then another way of doing it would be this one here that I did on the second floor which is you come in with your washer uh, drain line and this is connected through a Y into now your your main drain here is um, your lavatory right so we're increasing the size of our pipe here we're connecting our washer line uh, and then we're connecting with a combination Y8 bend and then this fitting can actually be inclined on a plane so that this pipe is actually sloping all the way up to the connection the correct way not with the double combination Y8 bend that we had before uh, I don't know if you see it like if you were to cut a section through here looking that way this pipe could be easily it could easily be sloped whereas if you have the double combination Y8 bend you cannot do that in other words, when, when you only have one side, then you can slope. But when you have two sides, you would have to have a V fitting, you know, something that, that opens like a butterfly. And that's not the case. Uh, but then this is the night thing that I wanted to show you. This is a, in this particular case, this one's from Charlotte, but many manufacturers have it. Uh, and this is a combination Y8 bend with one side outlet or one side inlet actually, because water is flowing in to the fitting. And just like you have one side inlet, you have uh, another fitting that has two side inlets, one on each side, one here and one here. So I just want to show you that and let me know in the comments, you know, which, which method you prefer, what you think that um, is best, what have you seen in the field, and let's start the conversation. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.